Welcome, everyone, to Mystery, a podcast about myths and history. I am one of your hosts, Bryant. Joining me, as always, is my permanent guest, Cammie. Hello, Cammie. Hi, Bryant. How is it going, Cammie? Fantastic. I had two days off in a row. That's so. a, incredible. I've had three <laughs> months off in a row. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> I really recommend it. Yeah, so this is Mystery, a podcast where every week we like to pick a random topic and or myth or epic or tale or what have you and try and give you kind of a story of it. And then we'll kind of go and talk about some of the, the workings behind that story. Uh, I like to think, Cammy. Do you remember? Do you remember the Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen movies from a while ago? Do you remember these films? Um, I did. They do one where they did like a switcheroo. No, no, they okay. had. So my sister was. What would I remember? Them, one I, of them was in Weeds, and that was no, good. That's, yeah. Well, they they had these movies, um, and it was it was almost this, they were always, they they actually were like in the same like universe. Like they were they had a continuity. And uh, it was just like them and then going on an adventure and there'd be a cute boy or something like that. And I'd watched them with my sister a long time ago. And at the end of every episode or every every movie, they would um, have a dartboard or uh, have like a a map on a dartboard and then throw a dart. And that's kind of like would tell you where they're going to be because they'd be like in Paris or whatever. I don't know. That's the only one I remember. I like to think that's what we do. Like it's you and me and we're throwing darts at a dartboard. That makes and sense. Yeah. That hits, and if if we did do that, let's pretend that we did. Uh, this dart happened to land on the corner of of the British Islands, and that would be uh, <laughs> Wales, the country, not the mammal. W A L E S. Today we're going to cover a little bit of Welsh mythology. Um, so uh, aside from being really hard to uh, speak, uh, Welsh. The language and the lore. Um, Kimmy, why don't you tell us about what we're specifically kind of going to focus on today? Sure. We are talking about the Welsh, I would say underworld, but didn't you have another name for it? The outer world or something? Uh, other is kind of what I see. Other world, yeah. <laughs> the other world, yeah. Yeah, not, not, yeah we'll, I'll talk about that a little bit, but yeah, it's not quite like hell. It's not quite like, yeah, it's the other world is sort of a good way to talk about it. Sort of where all the mystical beings come from, correct? Right, yes. Gotcha. So, and that place is called Anun, is that yes. right? Yes, yeah, okay. A-N-N-W-N. Yeah, don't, like I said, it's, it's Welsh is a crazy language. They don't like their vowels. They they like they like consonants, and they like lots of them, and they'll throw a vowel in, but you, you've said it wrong, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really so, cool. So, yeah, I am talking specifically about... Poil, the prince mm-hmm. of David. Okay. So, yeah, Poil went for a hunt in his kingdom of David, bringing his hounds. It wasn't long after he had set his dogs after a stag that he heard the baying of hounds from a different direction. He set off to find the source of the noise. After a short ta- time, he found some otherworldly hounds feasting on a stag. He drove them away and called his own dogs to feast. A man riding a great gray steed approached and chastised Poyle for not letting the hounds enjoy their kill. Poyle didn't want to offend the man, so he asked what he could do to make it up to him. The man confessed that he was not a mere mortal, and he was the crowned prince of the land of Anun. This king was in a feud with another king from his land. He asked Poyle to trade places with him for a year and a day. And if you guys remember, that was in the first Peter said that we did the idea of a year and a day uh, as a length of time that that something has to be done for. So what was that? That was the Green Knight, right? Gowan and the Green Knight. Yeah, yeah, that would have been the first one. Yeah. Yeah. So they're going to trade places for a year and a day. So Poyle's new friend, Aaron, changed both men's appearances so they resembled the other. And they both set off to rule each other's kingdoms. The year went well for Poyle. He did all of the things we imagine kings would do. He held feasts and hunts and received important guests. When the year was almost up, he called counsel and changed the enemy, or and challenged the enemy of his friend to armed combat. They met in the middle of a field. 
The fight was over before a minute passed. Hoyle struck through the man's shield and passed his armor into his torso. The enemy fell to the ground, begging to be hit again. But Poyle knew of the magic in this land, and knew that a second blow would not kill, but resurrect the man. Poyle did not stop there. He drove his forces through the country, conquering all of it in a day's time. All of Anun was now one kingdom. Poyle went to meet Aaron, and they switched back to their proper forms. When Poyle returned to his own kingdom, he saw all of the great things Aaron had accomplished and was very pleased of the traded year. And that's basically what I have. Oh, yeah. No, cool. That's great. That's kind of what I've seen, too. Um, well, thank you, Cami. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's it's hard. This is a, this is I'm getting a lot of vibes from when we looked into Maori mythology. Um, we, we did that episode with Peter not so long ago where we talked about uh, like the, the culture of the, the people in uh, Southeast Asia, the Polynesian islands. And, and it was tough because, one, you don't have a background really, you know, like a, a setting on that other than like Moana, if you watch that. And then it just isn't as part, as part of our like, you know, Greek mythology is just such a, you know, something you just have to cross in the Western world, like through, through normal schooling and things like that. Uh, and it gets a lot more attention and, and it's, it's understandable. And Welsh mythology brings a lot that it, one, of course, the, the tough language with some recognizability though. And it, it's really interesting, especially with Welsh mythology. Um, not only do I tie it in with Maori just for the unfamiliarity, but there's also a lot of Norse kind of uh, recognition there too, because Welsh mythology isn't necessarily contained to Welsh. Like it's, it's also very Celtic and basically the, 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 the native people of the of Britain and Scotland, Ireland, Wales, like the people, the indigenous peoples, it's kind of their religion or their mythology as much as like Norse mythology really applies to Germanic, Slavic, in some cases, it, it a really wide area as well. Um, like Odin and Thor are, are not just stuck in Norway, you know, um, and, and these characters, these people, the Arth even like the Arthurian legend and whatnot, it's all it goes across this whole area. So so when you say Welsh mythology, it's kind of tough to say uh, it's contained to the air, the geographic location of Wales because the Romans really kind of messed that up. But um, <laughs> and, and the Anglo-Saxons. But it's it's really cool. Um, the, the biggest source right now, again, like Norse mythology, this stuff wasn't really written down and chronicled in the same way. Uh, but the Mabinogian is sort of what it's called, and this is actually kind and of that weird. is the source I used. By the way, I don't think I went over that. Oh sure, beginning. yeah, excellent. Um, the Mabinogian is what kind of the collection of texts is called, sort of like how Norris has the the poetic and prose Edda written in, in around this time, actually, in in the medieval era. Um, so the Mabinogian uh, is was collected kind of formally in 18 uh the late 19th century by this woman lady charlotte guest who was an academic um who was big in uh london welsh societies and things like that um she uh the, the term had already been used before this but she sort of she brought kind of the like you can get her her translation on um gutenberg and stuff like that and and read it right now and she she did a i, I would say a, a pretty Good job, but she also, it's funny, like the, I was looking into it from, I, I have a few sources, but from Wikipedia's kind of discussion on it, um, apparently a medieval copyist kind of made the mistake when translating the word. Um, it, it's, it's a word and it basically looks like Mabinagian. And so kind of translating that with a, I guess it would have been like, you know, English, Latinish kind of inspired thing. Mabinogi was the term that was going to be taken, but Mabinogi with just, just an I at the end is already a Welsh plural word. And so Mabinogian kind of came to being. Um, so, uh, it, but it works. It, it, it works in the end. Um, and, and the word Mabinogi in general uh, means in, in, in the sense of like the uh, a genealogical son of uh, or child of so it's it sort of like the Mabinogian is kind of like, I, I like to think of it as like a, the word means sort of like a family tree or an explanation in that way. 
um and it's it's divided that, into that's what yeah. myth is yeah that's really neat right yeah exactly yeah so it, it's 11 tales that are sort of organized um into this compilation there's there's like separate books and parts to it as well uh, and they come from old uh oral histories uh and it's really cool so they were you know druids is sort of the word that these prehistoric britons would have been like the the people who sort of you know said these and the welsh word is um der widon uh, d-e-r-w-y-d-d-o-n it basically looks like a funky way of saying druid so i wonder I, I, I didn't go into the extreme etymology of the word druid but it looks like it kind of comes from this old welsh or this welsh term so how's it spelled uh, derwidon mm-hmm. uh, d-e-r so der w-y with d-d-o-n so derwidon um okay. so druid derwidon you know yeah so it's pretty cool um so again this is an oral record and the you know the the romans i don't remember exactly when they left the british islands but i know like like the the arthurian legend takes place between what third and sixth century bc or uh, ad and the i know the anglo-saxons 100 percent are doing their thing and being invaded by uh, vikings by like the eighth and ninth centuries so during this time period, uh, the Romans are coming. They're bringing Christianity. They're leaving. The, the islands are being, you know, populated by the natives still, the Bretons, the Welsh, the Scottish, the Irish, and then tons of different Viking clans, Anglo-Saxons, um, and you know what have you. And one thing that's happening that also happened with Norse mythology and its writings in the in the medieval era is the Christianization of this area. And that definitely seems like it influenced it. So Arthurian legend, though, super important, su- super intact. It, even Arthur is is included in these stories um, and is said to have, like, you know, uh, tried to interact with the king of Anun uh, and steal. I, I can't remember what it was. He, he tries to steal something from him. Uh, I had it in my notes somewhere. But it, it, there's this during the not, during the, the the christianization during the medieval period um there was this big influence of celtic norman french that also changed these tales so the tales that we have what lady charlotte translated and then what's been kind of refined aren't just it's not just ancient druid oral tradition finally written down then it's translated over like when it was written down these people were already being influenced by these people and stuff like that so that's that's a welsh myth 101 in a nutshell like i'm 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 sure i'm skipping a lot but to kind of finish up with what anun is so we the other world is kind of the best way to say it because it, it is a place it's a place you can go to essentially it's a place you can find and uh, I, there was a couple cool websites that I got, and one um, that I didn't spend too much time. It was funny, actually. The, the website's called SpookyIsles.com. Um, <laughs> it, it didn't have a super interesting that article. That sounds like a, a website we would use for I our know. podcast. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, it was really cool, though. It had, it had a little write-up very quick, but it actually kind of talked about the gates of Anun. And that's kind of the goal is to sort of like find where you can get to Anun. And uh, it, it talks about that the the same kind of stones that were used to make Stonehenge can be found in other parts of the island, and those act as gateways. And it, we, that would absolutely make sense that um, the Stonehenge is seen as a gateway, as it's ha- ha- super complicated. And of course, I mean, oh gosh, in the Welsh countryside, it's so beautiful, it looks like the other world uh, for sure. But Anun, it it got the the idea of sort of an afterlife thanks to christianization but it never was quite hell 100 percent um because again like it it wasn't just a place where you went when you died or when you were bad um so several different sources in kind of welsh mythology kind of call it as a realm of the gods realm of the dead kind of just depends on the source and who's talking about it 
Uh, SarahWoodbury.com is actually where I got a little, like the chunk of sort of the history behind it. And she actually wrote, uh, it's fun. I, I didn't have a chance to read it yet, but I'll, I'll shout out. It looks like a fun novel. The last pen dragon series, uh, started, it looks like in 2010, I actually just rented the first book through uh, online rental service. So you can, if, if depending on how your library works, your online stuff, you might be able to get it for free. Um, to rent and uh it, they're pretty sure that like the first book looks like it's like 150 pages but it's totally like i read the blurb for it it's totally welsh you know name sounding and celtic and i'm i'm excited to give it a dive but she talks about on her website anun and she also mentions the christianization of wales how anun was more influenced to hell and and it actually kind of more of like a greek underworld so we've talked we spoke of the Greek underworld um, recently, but uh, several times, and it's it's not a place just for bad people. It's 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 sort of like just the file cabinet of the dead in a way. But you can you know mortals, the living can go there. It's not easy, but the living can can adventure and go there. So I, I guess like thinking of the Greek underworld is a great way to think about a noon, but it's a little bit more reachable. It seems like um, yeah, it seems like it's just a like a horse ride away or whatever where even the irish myth that we spoke about they called it the other world i believe um yeah the halloween episode that we did right yeah yeah it was more like you had to go in this particular cave and like down this little entrance and yeah. then there were like demons you had to fight off and all this right. like this seems like just a place you can ride to yeah what um, some of the sources that Woodbury talks about also say that it could even be underwater, and so it, it, it's it's cool. It's it's a very uh, tangible place for people. It sounds like just just a matter of kind of being there at the right time. And uh, yeah, you mentioned um, the king um, Arun or Arun and uh, Poyle. Um, Poyle, uh, his yeah, the, like his realm kind of coexists. Like it seems like they're very like antithetical of each other in a way so it makes sense that they'd be able to kind of switch spots in that way so it's cool i mean we we're barely scratching the surface here there's a lot um the mabinogian is it's been translated several times i i got the idea here i i we started a, a reddit um you can definitely follow us uh, we'll be kind of doing a little bit more with it but i had someone recommend um focusing on a noon and also, uh, Jeffrey Gantz has a version of the Mabinogian. It's a little, uh, it, it's approachable, still kind of more dense than where we scratched, but that would be a good way too if you're absolutely loving it. And if you want the nonfiction element, The Last Pen Dragon by Sarah Woodbury it looks fun. It, <laughs> I, I was like, I was like nodding my head looking at the um, description for it, and then like I looked at the genres, and it was like fantasy, history, or non or uh, fiction, fantasy, and then it put romance, and I was like, oh yeah, here we go. <laughs> it's gonna be great. Um, something that my grand, my nan would be reading probably, especially because she's English too. So, um, but yeah, that's that's kind of Welsh myth 101 and a noon in a nutshell. Um, there's a lot more that will be going on, and and again, like this, there's a lot of crossroads here with Celtic, Scottish. So it's it's very encompassing. Um, I, I saw it referred to as a noon in general as the Britonic underworld, the Celtic underworld. It, it's and they all each time it's sort of described, it's sort of the same thing though. So again, I, I would kind of equate it all to like Norse mythology, where it just sort of depends on where you are, when you are, and who's kind of in the area is talking about what. But a noon, a n n w n, it, it has these uh, very. Uh, these these same sort of things that come up between each of the different like parts of England and and Wales and Scotland and Ireland the the islands so very cool uh, way for us to start and I I'm really excited to kind of go into it a little bit more in the future we'll pick some more stories out because there's definitely a lot more like Arthurian legend that we can talk about but we did we did talk about King Arthur our our first episode our Podicus Magnus with Peter back in December right or November. Yeah, it was. I think it was. It was definitely before the before. Yes. This year. Yeah. yeah I was so trying it, to think of a really bad way to put 2020, but I could. I know. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. But uh, no. So if if you'd like a little bit more, um, head back to that episode. It was a lot of fun, and that Arthurian legends really tied in with this, um, as well. So, uh, 
yeah, I think that about covers it. Um, Kimmy, do you have anything else you want to add? No, I, I think that's um, that's pretty much it. Uh, did you want to go over why you picked the Welsh <laughs> myth? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, this this podcast, this episode's um, dedicated to my granddad, uh, Dick. He, he unfortunately passed away um, due to the pandemic uh, and as well as some other things. And he, he was born and raised in uh, Wales, but also um, he made his way to England to marry my nan. And so I want to dedicate this episode to him. And I'm really glad that I can say that I've got a little bit of uh, blood in me. So that way I, I have a, a, a good in for looking up all this mythology and trying to pronounce all these words. So uh, but thanks, everyone. Um, thank you, Grampy. And uh, we'll catch you all next time. <laughs>